So I'm gonna show you real quick the first thing we do after we mount these deer, they got a lot of dry preservative on them. Uh, they use the dry preserve method. And it's basically a white powder all in the hair, um, inside the ears, around the eyes and everything. I've already cleaned up these deer, but I'd show you, all I normally do, I'd take a brush like this and brush inside the ears good. Everything's dry, so you really can't hurt anything. I'd brush around the eyes a little bit, brush inside the nose and inside the mouth. All of those places I want real clean where this skin is, so when we put our pox in here, and press it in, it'll, it'll actually attach itself to the eye, the tear duct, the nose and the mouth, and we're gonna actually add a artificial nose pad on here. So I'll show you how I do that. But after I brush it down good, I just go over the whole thing with air. She's uh, she's trying to help. She just don't know what she's doing. Take a wet Q-tip and just kind of wipe all the eyes. I've done it on all three deer already. Wipe these eyes. All the there will be a little bit of Potter's clay and some preservative around them. Clean clean the glass eyes. I want them as clean as possible. Now we're gonna do our finish work with epoxy skull. Um, same thing we use to repair horns and everything else. All right, we got our epoxy sculpt. This is the natural, it's a two part. All I'm doing, I just got this uh, little modeling tool. I always just reach in there and kind of pop me out uh, enough of it to start mixing up. Get me the same part, about the same amount out of this one. Need a little bit more than that. I'll just keep getting it out of there till I think I've got about the same amount. I'll get a little bit more of this one. That's pretty close. Just like always, we mix this up just like modeling clay or play doh or something that you was messing with. You'll see the the two colors go to mixing well. I like to twist it. it seems to be the best way to get it to mix is, is to twist it like that. I'm busy here. <coughs> You're into everything. Uh-uh. No, ma'am. <coughs> you want to play, don't you? <coughs> you just, you just want to play? <coughs> yeah. She's a handful. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little pinch off of this uh, epox. I hold it in my hand, it kind of keeps it warm. It doesn't seem to set up as quick. So I'll put a little BB right in there. Put another little BB right in this corner of the eye. And uh, I like to take the modeling tool. I made these modeling tools. You can see that one, that end, and then this end is a bigger piece, and then this one's a little bit smaller. I made these out of welding rods myself. Now I'll take this and I'll roll this out a little bit smaller like so. And there's a crack right in here. It's kind of small. I'm not sure if you can see it. But there's a crack right in here. Now there's clay in here. Once this is dried for three or four weeks or good and dry, it shouldn't move anymore. And technically if you use epoxy here instead of wax or something like that, this epoxy won't crack or give way. But the key to this is making sure that that this clay and everything under here is 100% dry before you ever finish your deer. If you mount a deer and you finish it two weeks later and this hadn't dried yet and you put epoxy in here and it dries a little bit more, you're gonna see a crack come in right here, you know, between the epoxy and the eye or between the epoxy and the skin. So I let my deer or whatever I'm doing dry good you know four five six weeks sometimes depending on the weather and humidity how hot it is um the hotter the faster they dry you know i've had them dry enough in two weeks and sometimes it takes four weeks so you kind of got to watch that winter time i have had to put a heater out here in the shop um for a few days just to 
help the deer heads dry fast enough. Get a little bit different angle there, but same thing on the top. You can't really see it, but there's always a, a top doesn't normally seem to be as bad, but there's always a little crack up there. And I always take that epoxy. Um, some people may not, but I always take it and try to push a little bit and every crack all the way around that eye. All right, I got me a cup I keep out here. It ain't for drinking, but that's water in there. You can see the water in it. And that's that's what I use for modeling. So I'll just take my modeling tool and I'll dip it in there and wet it. And that little bit of water on there will slide on this stuff. Take and, and press. And uh, I keep me a paper towel just to wipe this off in. But I'll just keep impressing that in there and sliding it like so. And you'll, you'll see it go to smoothing out with that modeling tool as I do that. I'm getting both the corners. I like to use this um, bigger end on the corners and then sometimes I'll go to the smaller end of that modeling tool. Same thing here. I'm just taking it, making sure that I, I tie it in with the skin. Press it in there good and it excess will just kind of push out of there. Same thing there. Now any excess on the eyes or up in here, I can take that and kind of clean that up a little bit. Now I got me a Q-tip. I like to wet it and just squeeze a little bit of the water out of it, whichever way it's actually rolled up. And then I take that wet Q-tip and waters are Water's our best friend when we're working this epoxy. I'll just rub that down and, and smooth that epoxy in. That wet Q-tip always works good. Now that'll dry and that one's ready to paint. Taking me a couple pinches again and kind of pressing them in there a little bit. Take our modeling tool push them down in that tear duct real good push that clay in there like that right there press it down good now I got another modeling tool and this one's a little bit different shape you can see it's round and I use that I built this one too I use that and I'll just take it stick it right in there like that push down come back down here at the bottom and push it back up then I take the other flat side and scrape any of the excess out of it stuff I don't need I'll dip it in the water one more time kind of smooth that out and that that modeling tool I built that just for these tear ducts are just round and small enough that you can go in there and smooth that out and it's already smooth but I'll still take a little q-tip and hit that two or three minutes I'm done um, with epoxy work right there around that eye and that tear duct those are ready to paint right, we're gonna do this uh, nostril right here so I'm going to start by just, um, they, normally I finish them pretty deep up in there so it doesn't show a lot, but I'm normally just stuffing this nostril full of epoxy. Just plenty right there. And once again, I'll take my modeling tool that I use for the tear ducts and I'm going to take that guy and just press down hard. Run it in there like that. Smooth this back all the way up until that tight part right there. All the way up to where that curve in that nostril is right there. That's a little bit of excess right there, so I'm gonna just take it out of there. Like so. I've wet this modeling tool again. I'm just going to start smoothing it out up in there, tying it in. I always press down pretty hard when I'm tying it into the skin so it takes good. You 
You see how I'm pressing that down in there. I'm still just smoothing it a little bit right this minute. All right, I've got it pretty smooth. Yep, you guessed it. Old Q-tip again. Wet Q-tip trick. Works every time. All right, I'm just finishing this uh, other side here. I put some epoxy in it, finishing it up. Nostrils are done, the eyes and tear ducts, do the mouth, and we'll come back and put the nose pad on. Um, the reason I do that in that order is so I finish the mouth in the front, and then that way when I make my nose pad, I can come down here and tie it in to what I'd already finished in the mouth. Now I would have had pins in here um, when we mounted it to hold the to hold the skin in while it dried. I always pull my pins back out, most of them, the ones I can get out, and uh, then finish, just basically fill this with epoxy and it, it'll hold that uh, skin in there. It won't ever come out or crack. Got all this going on trying to get everything taken care of. Ms. Danielle doesn't want me to get her deer heads and elk finished before I go to Colorado. Smoothing it out. Bring that modeling tool right around like so. Blend it all in good. So I'm actually pressing this epoxy um, down and spreading it out. I don't need a lot. All I need is enough to roll those dimples into it. So I'm working that epoxy right on down, just enough to cover this pad. We'll shape it up with our modeling tool in just a second. I'll show you how to do that. Works pretty good. All right, I got a different modeling tool. Um, shaped that one a little bit different. That's for tucking, and it works pretty good on getting this lower section of this nose tied in with the epoxy on the mouth. And it's, it's been a few minutes since we did the, the mouth, so it's already starting to harden and set up. So it actually makes this easier for me to tie in without messing messing that mouth part up. And I'm taking off some excess. I'm just shaping this is what I'm doing. Shaping it the shape of the nose pad. Outlining that nose pad. I'll show you how I tie it in in just a second. Put all the way around it. Taking just a little bit. I actually want to see the nose pad. I don't want I don't want this epoxy actually in the hair right now. I'm going to and just cutting it the shape of that nose pad all the way around that pad. Now I'm taking my finger wetting it good so my finger will slide on that and I'm pressing I'm pressing that epoxy right into that nose pad smoothing it right into that tying it in is what I'm doing tying it in good pressing it in you'll see it go to just blending in on that edge 
And if you look really, really close at people's taxidermy, some of these nose pads, these artificial ones, you'll see basically this line all the way around it. And you don't want that. You want this thing to look real when you get done with it. All right. I've got that tied in all the way around. Now I'm going to shape it. Smooth it in and shape it. Now this whole nose pad's wet right there. And one thing you gotta watch for before you paint is make sure there's no fingerprints on this. And to do that, I'll leave it wet and you can see the little lather that it worked up there. And I'll just take a paper towel and wipe that whole nose pad. And what that's doing, I'm wiping all my fingerprints off of that nose pad and I promise you, if you leave your fingerprints on that nose pad and paint it, you will see fingerprints on that nose pad. I've heard of people getting their mounts back and they're like, oh man, I see a fingerprint on the nose. Why is that? Well, that's why, because it's a epoxy nose pad and somebody touched it. And guess what? Fingerprints. Now what we got is uh what's called dandy noser it's a little dimple roller that i got years ago from the taxidermy supply just take and wet this thing and roll these dimples right into it it's just a little teflon roller but they took a dremel tool or something and cut those dimples into just move over a little bit. You don't want to double roll it. It'll dimples won't look right. So you want to skip over every time you hit you a new spot. Looks pretty good. Now you'll notice kind of notice around the edge that roller kind of leaves some little jagged edges around this. I always take me a q-tip and go right back around that edge and it smooths all of that in. You do that before you paint it you're going to have a good looking mount when you get done. Alright looks a little silly right now because it's gray but this gray is what you want. It'll be easy to tire darker colors in. So we'll come back and paint this in a few minutes. When we do, this thing's going to look natural as I'll get out.